Hey YouTube, welcome back to Spark Starter Channel. I just wanted to give you an overview of my cloud chamber projects. This is the first cloud chamber I built. It was pretty simple. I had a petri dish, painted it with matte black paint, just some paper towels around the edge, soaked them with ethyl alcohol, and set it over a bed of dry ice, popped this on, and in a few minutes you'll start seeing the um, traces the atoms shooting out of a radioactive sample this is like a little uranium uh, or rock a little chunk of it and um, yeah you'll see the atoms shooting right out of there and making traces in the, uh, the the fog traces in the vapor of the alcohol so this is my first one and it used dry ice now the problem with that is dry ice is kind of hard to find it's kind of a pain to get you know sometimes you have to order it special or it comes with you know if you're packaging foods and things but it's um it's a little bit of a pain to get so i wanted to just um do a pelt uh, a cloud chamber with peltier cooling and so this is my first attempt had one of the uh stacked peltier plates and uh it does in fact get down to negative 40 degrees C um, you need negative 25 degrees C to begin observing the cloud chamber effects but the uh, and uh, and what I thought I'd do is take another one of these petri dishes I cut a little hole in the, the bottom that fits right over the last uh, segment of the Peltier cooling device and I thought oh, I'll just pop this guy here Put a little, you know, rag of alcohol around the edge and let it cool down. And uh, I start seeing my tra uh, my traces again in the alcohol vapor. But that didn't work. This um, this little Peltier cooling device and the thin uh, copper just couldn't ever get this uh, this copper foil material down to the right temperatures I needed to have the cloud chamber operate. So that was. That was my second iteration of the cloud chamber, first of the thermoelectric cooling. So I got a little bit larger Peltier cooling devices, mounted them on a heat sink. And this is a dual stage Peltier. So it should be able to um, cool a differential of 40 degrees C. So I put this heat sink into an ice block cool it down and that's my uh, my initial temperature is zero and it's able to cool these um, the top surface of the Peltier device down to around negative 40 degrees C and my first attempt was this aluminum plate and I put two aluminum uh, copper discs with some uh, thermal paste underneath and then a little Gorilla Glue to hold the copper discs in place and I would just I wanted to be able to just put this whole uh, heat sink in the ice block in the freezer and then just you know pull this guy out set it on top add my add my chamber which I'll talk about this a little more in a second but the problem I was having with this was that I could never get those copper discs to, to seat correctly and it was uh, hampering my ability to cool this guy down. Uh, so what I went to next for a base was just one sheet, about one millimeter thick, a uh, piece of copper plate. And again, uh, silver thermal paste underneath and a little Gorilla Glue around the edges to hold it in position. And that seats right on top of the Peltier plates, it makes a nice, smooth contact underneath. Then I have my acrylic chamber. And I fashioned these with 3D printer. And also I made this, uh, this housing. It just fits the acrylic tube uh, with 3D printer. So again, Gorilla Glue holds the aluminum plate to the 3D printed a fixture that allows me to embed the acrylic tube and I have these 3d printed rings and I have some felt 
I found that um, paper towel works just as well as felt. Um, and I have two layers of it. So these holders, these old holders I have 3D printed, have a little gap here that allows me to put the the paper towel or felt nested in there. And then I would coat that with alcohol. And you can use ethyl or 95% uh, isopropanol alcohol. And you'll also notice that one of these uh, alcohol vapor rag uh, holders has this little feature that allows me to run a wire here. That is the high voltage line that uh, clears the ions from the chamber and allows you to get nice clear traces. Now this whole assembly will work without the high voltage but having that high voltage on the line um, is going to let you see more traces and, uh, and see them more clearly as those atoms shoot out into the fog vapor. So final step here. I've got my uh, little uh, collection of uh, radioactive rocks. This was one of my early videos from years ago if you want to go check it out and I have my Geiger counter you might remember this from another spark starter channel project and you'll see this guy is letting off a little bit of radioactivity so it's slightly higher than uh, background radiation and we'll just pop it here in our chamber. Hook up our Peltier plates. We've got our heat sink with Peltier plates in the ice bath. And another thing I found was uh, I have each pelt your plate on a separate power supply. Each one I adjust to 13.8 volts. I think the maximum for these pelt your plates is 15. So I just keep it a little under its maximum rating. They both draw about 5 amps when powered. And, uh, yeah, I found if uh, you put the Peltiers in parallel on one supply, um, yeah, they're not matched, so I was getting uh, uneven cooling. And so I have a little, little lid here. So I've got the uranium sample popped in here. Pop on a little lid. You will need a lid. Without a lid, uh, just the ambient air disturbs the... Uh, the vapors and they can't accumulate in the cloud chamber so I definitely need a lid and I have little high voltage wires my wires that I showed you earlier come out and I'm just hooking them up to my high voltage uh, power supply you might remember this from another high voltage video and I turn it up just just a little um, to about 10 percent so I don't put much uh, high voltage potential. This guy can do 50 kilovolts, um, but yeah, we're only energizing this to a few thousand volts, this line, to clear out the ions in the chamber. All right, so that is the overview. Let's give it a shot. 